Hello. Welcome once again to Denton's Storytime. This time I'm looking at courtship and a wedding, but not one I'd recommend to couples planning to tie the knot today, unless of course you're looking for the Weirdo Nutter of the Year award, and you'd certainly get it with this wedding. This is the wedding of Skadi and Njorda, the combination of solid ice and liquid water in marital form, you might say, because Njorda is connected with the sea and Skadi with ice and snow. But she's not, she's not the goddess of winter, as she's so often wrongly called. She wasn't even the goddess at all to begin with, and her only connection with winter would be her love of skiing and hunting in the snow. You know, she couldn't have produced a snowflake if she tried. To cut a long story short, Scottish father, Fiazzi, had kidnapped the goddess Idun, and he got himself killed in the subsequent rescue operation. Now, oh, that, that really pissed her off. Oh, yes, she was mightily pissed off, despite the fact that her father had committed kidnapping and assault and battery, too. So you could say, you could say he got what he deserved, which he did, of course. But Skadi, you know, she wasn't interested in all those legal niceties. You know, she didn't care about that. She loved her father, and regardless of his crimes, she wanted vengeance. And, oh, yes, did she want vengeance. Putting on her armor, taking her weapons, and heading for Oskada. And she was going to sort the gods out really good when she got there. Now, Skadi was formidable, to put it mildly, and none of the gods wanted to fight her. And they hid behind a law, you see, that stated that blood might not be shed within the walls of Oscar. Oh, how convenient that was. Of course, nobody suggested simply going outside the walls, and they could have fought her all day out there, and that would have been fine. But even Thor and Tyr were, well, they were a right pair of cowardly custards when it came to facing Skadi. One look at her, and they went all wobbly in their lellies. So the gods offered her compensation for her loss. What would she accept? Now, she had to think about it. Oh, yes, Skadi was no fool. She spotted a golden opportunity for self-advancement, and she agreed that if the gods allowed her to marry one of them, thus becoming a god herself, you see, clever move there, and also if they could make her laugh, well, she would consider her debt of honor to be paid, and the gods accepted that. But, you know, why, why did she add the laugh requirement? You know, that was a bit odd, really. And the trouble was, you see, Skadi had absolutely no sense of humor. No, not in the slightest. Jotner were not noted for their happy, joyful personalities at the best of times, and Skadi was a Jotun. They were not the, the life and soul of the party, you could say. Not that they were invited to very many. And Skadi was at the bottom end of the scale as far as humor goes. But the gods, well, they did their best. They did their best to get at least a smile out of her. They tell her the funniest jokes they know. That they're really breaking up. No, oh, oh, yes. Ah, did you hear the one about, oh, oh, you love this one. It's so funny. And she's like, oh, hmm. yes, they're not doing very well. They try pulling silly faces. You know, they go, <laughs> but Scotty is sort of, <sighs> they're going nowhere fast. So eventually, Loki was given the task of making her laugh, and this was Loki at his best. Oh, yes. He tied one end of a rope to a goat, and the other end to his own testicle. And then he and the goat, they had a great big tug of war. The goat gave a mighty heave, and Loki, with no doubt a suitable cry of extreme agony, as his chances of any more children were seriously diminished, is pulled off his feet, and he lands right in Skadi's lap. And she laughs! Well, you know, she sort of chuckled, uh, chuckled, at least, like sort of... <laughs> Yes, but, but everyone agrees that is sufficient, it's close enough, it's all they're going to get anyway, so they have to put up with it. Now, to find her a husband and make her a god. Much easy enough, you might think, you know, just pick a husband from the assembled gods and Bob's your uncle finds your aunt. 
but no, it wasn't quite that simple. For some strange, you know, unfathomable reason, the gods insist that she must choose her husband solely by his feet. No pun intended. And so to accomplish this very curious, you know, nonsensical method of husband selection, all the gods line up behind a curtain with only their feet visible. Weird. Anyway, Scardi chooses the one with the cleanest, nicest feet. Oh, the lovely pair of feet there. Mm, really nice. You know, beautiful pair of plates to meet. Thinking it must be the lovely boulder. You know, I mean, obviously, the lovely feet like that. Oh, they've got to be boulder. But no, no. The nice, clean feet are the result of time spent in seawater. And they belong to, shock horror, Norda. Hmm. Well, see, he lives beside the sea, spends much of his time in the water, and so his feet, well, they have a distinct advantage over all the other feet. She wasn't exactly chuffed at that turn of events by a long way. No, Balder would have been her preference, of course, he was married to Nana at the time, but I mean, you know, who cares about his details like that? Details get in the way. But when she discovers how kind and decent Njolder is, she accepts that she's really got a very good bargain after all. You know, she's quite lucky, in fact, in her choice. He is one of the nicest of all the gods. Now, he already has two children, Freya and his sister Freya, but Scotty happily accepts them as her stepchildren. And after all, why not? I mean, ready-made children, instant family, no need for any of that, or any of that Hanky panky lovey dovey has her father stuff to get them. Oh, God, no, none of that required. You know, and I'm sure Scardi's reaction to the required biological procedure to produce children was probably on a par with her sense of humor, like non existent. So, an instant, no work required family, well, it must have seemed a pretty good idea. So, Scardi and Yorda were married with great pomp and uh, festivities. Uh, it doesn't have a happy ending, though, I'm afraid. Well, you know, it is a, it is a sort of a, a fairy tale, so what did you expect? I mean, fairy tales hardly ever end very well. But, uh, you know, it, it wasn't actually an unhappy one either, the couple eventually parting, but they remained friends, you know, just good friends. So, it's not all doom and gloom, but that's a tale for another video. For now, let me uh, just say farewell, and I hope you enjoyed this video. So, goodbye for now.